Hello, I am Francesc and I have the honor to be back to FOSDEM for the last talk of the Go Devrum 2021 and today I have the honor to share the stage with my friend and co-organizer of the Go Devrum, Marcet. Hey Marcet, how are you doing? Hey Francesc, I'm doing well, how are you? Doing great, long time no see. It is uh, kind of cool to be back to Brussels even though, you know, it's just virtually. Hey, just be happy it doesn't rain. <laughs> True, I think I feel like the beer, the beer and the waffles are the things I'm going to miss. The rain, really not that much. I will be sending you some waffles later. <laughs> uh, but uh, enough talking, uh, because we actually have a long talk and only 25 minutes to give it. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to you know, share a big shout out to all of the speakers that came before us. Those were amazing talks and we know because we actually had to review the videos. But thanks so much for participating. We know it's really not easy to participate in a conference remotely, as you can see. Also, thank you to everyone who has been watching from their warm, comfortable homes, eating some snacks, sitting in their pajamas. And we really hope you were able to make it into the dev room this year. Yeah, and I hope that uh, everyone staying at home has been able to stay as comfortable as I am right here wearing my slippers. But anyway, without any more chatting, let's go into the talk and I'm going to let you march it to the honors. So, see you later. Thank you. So today I'm going to talk about changes to the language, changes to the standard library and changes to the tooling, as well as give you an update on some design drafts for new versions of Go and give you an update of the Go community. So, what's new since Go 1.14? Well, Go 1.15 and Go 1.16. Go 115 was released in August 11, 2020, and Go 116 is expected to release this month, February of 2021, which we currently already have a release candidate out for. First up is changes to the language. Well, they're not this year. Up next is changes to the tooling. First of all, we have some important changes in Go modules in Go 116. The first one is that Go modules is now enabled by default. This is the equivalent of setting Go 111 modules to on. The next big change is that Go build and Go test no longer modify the Go modules file. If you now want to modify it, you will need to run Go mod tidy, Go get, or Go install. Go install also got some new improvements. For example, it can now install a specific version of a module. This makes go install now the recommended method of installing modules instead of go get. There are even some more changes to modules. For example, in go 116, go module authors can now retract versions by using the retract verb in the go modules file. In this example, I retracted the version 0.20.20 for having a dangerous virus. If I now want to get this module as a user, I will get a warning that this version is retracted because of a virus and I should probably update the latest version. Next up is GoVet. Why are these changes important? Well, this could make you test fail, as GoVet is run on GoTest, updating to a new version could just make you test fail. So here are a few new warnings which GoVet will now give us. The first one is that it will warn us against string conversions from numeric types. It will also warn us for impossible interface conversions. And it will also warn you when t.fail is used inside a coroutine. Let's take a closer look. So this is the first one, which where a string conversion from a numeric type other than by.rune will now give you a warning. You might want to just convert your integer into a string by using a type conversion. However, this will not give you the, in, the integer value, it will give you its UTF-8 value, which is not the behavior you probably want to have. Let's take a closer look at this. So here we have a simple Go program, and we have a number which we want to pass to our function println. Our println only accepts a string, so something you might want to just try is to just cast your number into a string. When you do that, you will not get 1, 2, 3, 4, but you will get the letter A. This is because 1, 2, 3, 4 actually links to the A value in the UTF-8 alphabet. 
So if you now run GoVet, we will now get an error for the debug by GoVet that we should not convert our integer into a string. It also marks that maybe we should just use the format function to print this number instead. Now, you might actually want to print the letter A using these methods. It's also possible if you use a value other than an integer. So just make it a room, and we run GoFed again, and it doesn't complain. And we still get our letter A. Another new warning in Go115 is that it will warn you against impossible interface conversions. It already did it, but it didn't catch everything. For example, when you had the same name signature of two interfaces, it would not error, even though they might have used different data types. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have two interfaces. We have a cat and we have an octocat. Both cats can meow, but only one can code. So when we now want to convert our octocat to our cat, we will now get a warning from GoVet Go because our cat interface will actually return a string where our octocat does not. Previously, only the compiler would have warned against, so we really hope you don't catch this in your code base. In Go116, another warning got added to GoVet. GoVet will now give you a warning if you use steal or fail inside a GoRoutine. This is something you actually don't want to have because this will not fail the test correctly as it will not stop the test, it will only stop the current Go routine and the rest of the test will just keep running. So let's take a closer look at this. In this example, we have a small test function and this test function will do nothing except just sleeping for 10 seconds and then ending. So what we want to do here is actually run something in the Go routine. Actually run the Go routine. Oops. Now let's look at a scenario where we will actually fail the test. So we will use fail now and we will make sure that something is not printed. When we run the test, it will actually keep running for 10 seconds and then fail. As you will see, we didn't actually immediately, once the coroutine starts, actually fail. This is because fail now is only able to stop the current go routine, as you can see that the print line that the line that we print will never be printed. If you now run go get a go vet in go one sixteen, you will now actually get a warning that you're running fail now in a non test go routine, meaning that only that go routine will exit and not the actual test. There are also some improvements to the compiler. The first one is in binary size. Binaries are now 5% smaller in Go115 and even around 10% smaller in Go116. We have a few examples here and we see that we get many improvements from small programs going from Hello World to bigger ones going at the Qplet being 7% smaller in Go116 than it was in Go114. Go115 also adds a spectral flag to add in binary mitigations for spectral vulnerabilities on Intel systems. Go115 also has an improved linker. The linker is now faster, more robust, and uses less memory. That's all the things you want in a linker, right? Go116 also adds a new improvement when it comes to inlining functions. The compiler will now be able to inline functions which have non labeled loops method values and type switches. The inliner will all now also be able to inline more indirect calls. If we look here, we have a count numbers function and an is number function. When we now compile this in Go116, we see that is number is getting inlined in our count numbers function. When we now benchmark this function, you will see that we have a 28% increase in performance in Go116 compared to Go114, thanks to this function now being in line. Go116 also tackles a very important problem of embedding static assets in Go. Why should you want to embed static assets? It makes your distribution way more easy. 
by not having to care about providing additional files on the file system and just having everything inside your single binary. It's a very common problem and many solutions to this problem exist. Many solutions will require you to run some extra commands which you might put in a make file or you might work around this with GoGenerate. Here is a list of a few alternatives which to use for embedding files into Go. Or you could just use Go116, which now has the embed directive. It integrates with GoBuild and GoRun, so you don't have any additional steps when building your binary. And it uses this new directive, Go, Column, Embed. Embed will now be able to embed your files into strings, slice of bytes, or the new embedFS. About embedFS, I will come back later. Next up is a standard library. We're going to start by first the breaking changes. An important breaking change was added in Go 115 and has to do with X509 certificates. When now Go makes a TLS connection, it will no longer validate the host name of the TLS server against the common name field of the certificate. This behavior actually has been deprecated since the year 2000. However, many TLS clients like browsers still have this behavior built in. Starting in Go 115, Go will now only verify it against the subject alternate names of the certificate. So you wonder, am I affected? Well, first of all, you make sure that all your HTTPS and other TLS certificates make use of the DNS or URL send fields. If this sounds like nothing to you, then you probably don't have to worry, because most public certificate authorities will set this for you. If you run your own private CA, it might be worth to double check. Next up are some new packages. The first one is Runtime Metrics. Runtime Metrics allows you to expose metrics throughout the code base in one generic interface. All metrics now have a unique string key which you can address the metrics in. Let's look at an example. Here we have an empty main package which we now want to look at how much memory this code will be using when we run this. So previously I could just uh, look in several packages where I can find the memory statistics but now we have one interface which is runtime metrics. So what we can do is we can define a variable, my metric. We're going to give the value which you can find in the documentation that we need memory classes total bytes. So this will get my total memory usage. And then next step is we need to get a sample. So we're going to create a sample. And we want a sample of metrics are sample. And our interface uses actually uses a slice for this. But we only want one, so we just make one make a slice with length one. Then we need to give the sample a specific name. This name is the metric we want to fetch. From our metric system. So we will just give sample zero the name of my metric. Then we can call our metrics package to actually start reading our samples. So now we have read our metrics, we want to actually do something with our value. And what we want to do is we want to assign it to a variable so we can print it easily later. So now I can just do a variable called total memory and assign it the value of our sample of index zero. And now we have a name, but we also have a value. This value can be many things, but in this case, if you look at the documentation, it will return us a value of a uint64. And now we can just print the total memory. If we now run gometric.go, we will actually read this sample from our metrics library, put in the value inside a variable, and print it out and seeing how much memory my Go program is using every time I run it. In Go 116, we now have a new package called IOFS, which gives us for the first time in the standard library an interface for a read-only file system. This interface provides us an FS, 
a file, file info and a zero entry. This IOFS package now enables us to have a common minimal interface while we can then compose upon just like we have been doing with IO Reader and IO Writer. It also gives us some functionality on top of its interface, for example, fs.walk. Go116 also gives us a new places where this file system interface is already been implemented. We now have os.dirfs, which gives us the file system interface back. We have embed.fs, which with our embed directive, we can now embed a whole file system, which we then can read using this interface in Go. We also have a zip reader, which we then can read files from a zip file using the file system interface. We also have now several consumers, like HTML and Hitex templates will now be able to use the file system. And we also have NetHTPDIR, which is able to serve over HTTP our file system. I have taught you before about EmbedFS and how you can embed several files inside your Go binary. Well, EmbedFS satisfies IO.FS. So we now can use Go colon embed directory with several files, which we then can use our file system interface to read these files inside the binary. If you want to know more about how this design came to be, I recommend watching the IOFS design draft, which has now been implemented. You can find it at the link below. And there were many more changes which we didn't have time to talk about today. We already have been going on long enough. So if you're interested in reading many more changes, the change log is always the place to be. So Go runs on many platforms and Go even keeps improving on this front. So we're now going to look at what's new in the different Go ports. So first of all, Go 115 dropped support for macOS and iOS 32 bits. This will now only work on 64 bit processors. Go 115 also now requires to use macOS 10.12 or later. Go 115 also added ARM support to OpenBSD2 as well as MIP64 support. Go116 then also added ARM support to the NetBSD port. And there are even more changes. For example, on Windows, Build Mode Pi is now the default. What does Build Mode Pi stand for? Well, Pi stands for Position Independent Executables. This allows your binary to be placed at every memory address possible in your computer's memory. This is needed if you want to use ASLR to randomize your memory. This makes the runtime more secure. There has also been improvements on RISC-V support. RISC-V is a completely open source architecture and is also now supported by Go. Go115 added many improvements on the Linux RISC-V 64-bit ports and Go116 went even beyond and added Seago and ASLR support. There has also been new requirements in Go116 for x86 platforms. The minimum required Intel processor to run Go is now the Intel Pentium 4. This is because SSE2 is now required. Talking about Intel, what's up with Apple Silicon? Apple Silicon is now supported in Go116. In case you don't know what Apple Silicon is, Apple Silicon is a 64-bit ARM architecture made to be running macOS and Go now supports it in the 116 release. It supports everything you might want to use, like CGO, internal external linking, CR guide, C shared, and on the Pi build modes. It also supports the race detector. So one quite important change is that Darwin ARM64 used to be compiling for iOS. Now it will compile for Mac and iOS, making this iOS specific flag to be iOS slash ARM64. If you want to know more about running Go on iOS, you can follow this link. If you want to know more about Apple Silicon and Go, we recommend to check out Filippo's work. Filippo wrote amazing benchmarks on testing Go on the M1 chip. And spoiler alert, everything is faster except one field, which is crypto. Crypto has a significantly less performance than we see on Intel platforms. And this might be because Intel has a specific AES-NI co-language and instruction set to speed up AES in the silicon. 
Apple Silicon probably has this too, but it might just be that code doesn't yet know how to talk this language. So we are very curious to see what will happen here. Next up, let's talk about the future of Go. More specifically, Go 2.0 and an update on several design drafts. But first, let's start by a quick quiz. Which of these build constraints means Linux and C Go? Please raise your hands. Oh, I cannot see you. No worries, we saw this. So Francesc tweeted the following and we have the results. They were quite inconclusive. So let's take a look at the correct answer. Well, first of all, build constraints require a space between the two slashes and the plus, which leaves out the first two answers. The next one is that there is no colon after build. So that leaves out these answers. And lastly, the end is not a thing. So you are all just wrong. And this is why there is a new proposal to improve and simplify this syntax, because this is the current syntax for Linux or Darwin and Seago. This new design draft proposes to use a similar directive than Go Generate and Go Embed, but also by using Boolean expressions, just like we would otherwise write in Go. So now this is the new proposed syntax for Linux or Darwin and Seago by writing go column build and just use normal boolean expressions. If you want to know more about this proposal or leave feedback, you can do so at this link below. Next up is an update on the big subject, generics. Currently, we already are three years into writing the proposal for generics and we have one important update this year. The parentheses are now replaced by records. Now for an update about the community, and more specific, our FOSDEM community. Our FOSDEM community, our Go dev room, started back in 2014. And you might see a familiar face here, because Brad Fitzpatrick is back this year. In 2015, we continued small. In 2016, we grew out, and we kept the same big room for three years. In 2019, we got a giant upgrade to hold more than 500 people in one room. In 2020, right before our pandemic, we even got a bigger room. And now we have the most infinite room possible, the internet. I am standing to you from my living room at my house. You're also sitting there. Francesca is all the way over in San Francisco, but we're all still joined together here at FOSDEM. So, talking about conferences, what are the Go conferences this year? Well, the first one is, of course, the Go Dev Room, which you are here right now and it's all over now. So, if you just joined, you might want to check out the FOSDEM YouTube to rewatch all talks. The next conference is uh, GoForCon EU Online, which will take place uh, from May 26 to May 28. After that, there is also Con42 Go, which will also be online on June 24th. And sadly enough, these are the only two Go conferences currently announced. So please get vaccinated. Thanks, Marce. So that concludes our talk and the Go DevRom at Boston 2021. We didn't want to finish without thanking again you all for watching, thanking our amazing speakers and the organizers of Boston. You did all an amazing job. And, you know, we just wanted to say take care. And we hope to see you all this time in person back in 2022. Au revoir. Tot ziens. Goodbye. Fais bon, come here.